The following lesson is from Wireless Network Administration, PWO 104 Learn Smart Video Training. To find out how you can get unlimited access to our entire Learn Smart Video Training library, call 1-800-418-6789. It is important that we understand the different types of wireless networks that actually exist. We not only have the wireless local area network, but we have other types of networks as well that are comprised of wireless networking devices and communications. So in order to prepare for the CWNA certification and to make good decisions in our business implementations, we need to understand what these wireless networks are all about. Of course, the first and fundamental type of wireless network that we deal with is a wireless local area network. In most wireless local area networks, we have an access point that is acting as the central hub or communication center for the wireless communications. And the client devices may include laptop computers, desktop computers, as well as PDAs and other devices. A wireless LAN is comprised of multiple different components. At the infrastructure level, or in other words, the things that exist all the time, the things that build the base of the network across which all of the other devices communicate, we have access points, we have wireless controllers, and of course, we often utilize power over Ethernet, which allows us to power our access points without having to have a regular power plug to plug them into at the point of installation. We also have client devices, and of course, these include our handheld devices, laptops, and desktop computers. These devices will need a wireless radio in them that can communicate with the infrastructure access point. In addition to wireless LANs operating in infrastructure mode, we can also run them in what's called an independent basic service set or an ad hoc mode. So there are different modes of operation, but a wireless LAN is a wireless network that utilizes devices based on the IEEE 802.11 standard specification. We also have a wireless network known as a wireless metropolitan area network or a wireless MAN. Now, a wireless MAN differs from a wireless LAN in that it covers a large area like a city or maybe a military base. This area is much larger than what you would expect to cover with wireless LAN technologies. We need to have radio frequency communications that can travel for portions of a mile or possibly even multiple miles. And therefore, we need a different standard and a different technology. And that's where the IEEE 802.16 standard comes in. And it is often called a wireless man. It's also sometimes called WiMAX. 802.16 gives us this ability to cover very large areas. Wireless man implementations managed by cities using 802.11 have also been discussed, but most of them have failed to materialize. And those that did materialize have had problems. For example, Philadelphia implemented a wireless MAN based on 802.11 and the implementation of many, many different access points, hundreds of access points around the Philadelphia area. However, this wireless MAN has seen failure because they simply could not find a cost-benefit ratio. They couldn't get enough people to sign up for the service to make up for the cost of implementation. And toward the end of its life, it was losing about $200,000 per month. And so it has been very difficult to implement wireless mans using 802.11. And so 802.16 is more likely to be the one that ends up succeeding in the end for these types of networks. We also have the IEEE 802.22 working group that is focused on developing MAC and PHY specifications for wireless regional area networks. These would be networks that span a larger area than a wireless MAN. Here's a good way to think of this because the WRANs are actually based on something in this area. Think of it like a TV station. You may have noticed that you can pick up a TV station sometimes from 40, 50, 70 or even 100 miles away with the right antenna. Well, that's what a WRAN is all about. Because what it actually does is it takes advantage of the white space or the unused area in the radio frequency spectrum that is usually allocated to television broadcasting. 
and using very strategic methods, it's able to analyze the radio frequency spectrum and pick those spaces that are actually available for communications. And the most interesting part, it can dynamically change. So if a new TV station comes up in the area, guess what? This network technology can actually adjust automatically and still use only the available white space for communications. It's a phenomenal thing to watch in the future, and the 802.22 working group is still under development at this time. The next type of wireless network is a wireless WAN, or wireless wide area network. This kind of network is going to cover a very large geographic area, and it's really no different in concept from the wide area networks that we've had for many years. WANs can span a state, a country, or maybe even be worldwide. WANs traditionally have been interconnected using ISDN, T1, E1, and other such lines to connect, but wireless WAN technologies will connect using wireless communications. Now, most wireless WANs actually use the cellular networks. That is to say they'll piggyback across the cellular network and use that infrastructure for communications. Cellular technologies include, of course, GPRS, CDMA, TDMA, and GSM. These are not covered in detail in the CWNA program, but you do need to know that a wireless WAN will usually be implemented using cellular technologies. The next type of wireless network is a wireless PAN or a wireless personal area network. A wireless personal area network is a network that covers a small personal area and serves an individual or a small number of users. So this is something that's usually going to span out only one to six or maybe ten feet. They rarely go beyond that distance because they're intended for very short distance communications. Think of things like Bluetooth devices or proprietary 2.4 gigahertz devices like some computer mice and so forth or even infrared devices. These devices which include pocket PCs, mobile phones, mice, keyboards, headsets and so forth, these devices are usually used within just a few feet of the receiver. And so we'll connect a receiver to something. For example, we may connect a receiver to a USB port on a laptop computer and then we'll communicate with that receiver using a mouse or a keyboard within just a few feet of that device. If you've had any experience using wireless mice and wireless keyboards, you've probably noticed this short range communications that they actually employ. Because if you move your keyboard too far away from the receiver on the computer, you begin to notice communications problems, all of the keys are not taking, or maybe the mouse is acting sporadic as you try to use it. These are the kinds of things that we face with these short distance communications technologies. Things like, again, Bluetooth and proprietary 2.4 gigahertz communication systems. So keep in mind that a wireless personal area network is just what it sounds like. It's a network for use within your very small personal area.